Hello guys, it's Deezer HD here um, with part two of our motor or spinning wheels tutorial. And today we're going to be animating or moving our toruses that we built in part one. If you haven't seen part one, the link is in the description for you, so go and check that out. But let's get straight into this. So I've just opened up the scene here in Cinema 4D exactly where we left off. Um, Right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into our scene group and you want to select our floor and you want to right mouse click and go to simulation tags and collider body and you can close that group up and then you want to select both toruses from our torus group and uh, go to simulation tags and rigid body and you can see now when we hit play they will have proper dynamics so they will uh, have the they will bounce off each other. You can see there we've got a nice colliding body. And we need that to get this animation started. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go up into simulate. And uh, let's get into, where is it, dynamic, sorry. And you want a motor. And what we can also do is go into simulate. And you see where it says particles. You can click this little dotted line here and it will bring it out into a separate um, little box if you like and what you can do is drag that so you can see there's like a little light grey line above view um, so you can see we've got them up there and that will just make our workflow a little quicker so we can leave that like that uh, for the future I'm also going to grab a hypernerb from this tab here and um, I'm going to put the motor into the hypernerbs get the two toruses and put those into the motor and then put the hypernerbs in the torus uh, group. So we've still got that group. Quite confusing, but that's it. I'm going to call this a uh, motor. So that means um, we'll have more polygons and it will smoothen it off a little bit more. You can see here, it's adding a lot more polygons and uh, it just makes our renders just a bit better and smoother. Uh, so now if I did this, it, we're not going to get anything because in our motor, we need to click our motor and you can see we need to add objects in so we're going to add our right torus and our left torus and we can hit play and we're going to get some movement so you can see they rolled for forward at the start so that's a good good thing uh, what we can do is uh, change our torque let's put it on something like 940 or 950 and that will make it off the point a lot quicker. You can see we've already got that movement there now. So that means they're not just going to fall straight away. But you can see at the start we get a bit of a wheel spin effect. You can keep that, but if you change your angular target speed to something like 860 or something, 865, uh, this is just from experimenting. I'm not just making up these numbers. You can see we don't get as much of a wheel spin effect and they roll they still roll off and you can see it's quite a straight line how they roll off they just roll off really so this is when we're going to start using our tabs up here that we put up earlier so the first thing I want you to grab is a turbulence and uh, we can put this scale up to something about 250 and what that'll do is let us get a bit of a wobble with the wheel there you go, you can see we've got a little bit of a wobble, not not a lot, but we've got a bit of a wobble, which is a good thing. So we can put that into our Taurus tab, and that's all we're going to do for our turbulence, um, I believe. So yeah, that should be fine, you can always, always change it, don't um, follow my instructions exactly, because then it wouldn't be creative, it would be copying, which isn't good. The, the next thing we can do is let's add some um, friction and we're just going to, I think we can just leave the strength on 10 for our friction which means it will be slower off the point but it will be more realistic as you can see. We don't have to have this, it's just something like added in, maybe change that down to 5 for the strength. And uh, what we can do now is, pause this, and we can uh, add some wind in. So we can just put our friction into our torus to have to stay organized. Let's grab a wind. And on the wind we can change 
nothing. We don't actually need to change anything at all. So we can click this little black box up here and let's go back to the start so we can see our two toruses. So you, on the wind, if I click off it, it sometimes shows you an arrow. Doesn't look like it is. Yep, there you go. You can see an arrow of which direction our wind's going. So we can start to rotate this. We want to rotate it 90 degrees, so hold and shift will constrain that uh, movement to 5 degree. I think it's called increments, but I'm not actually sure. So now we're going to move. We're going to have two winds in this project. So one, way, one wind, you can see, goes this way. So we want one to go there. Whoops, I'm moving the friction right now. Let's grab the wind. So let's drag one wind back. And you want to move that up as well. And to the side. Just so it's like that. Or just there, like that. That should be good. And what we're going to do is duplicate this wind. So that's com Command CV or Control CV. And we're just going to put a, a minus in front of the rotation here. So it's minus 90 and you can see that's just basically reversed it so let's move that to about the same distance away and move that across just making sure that that looks all right to me maybe just a little bit further tiny bit there we go and it should now move a bit more smoothly or have I I've done it again um, I've recorded this tutorial twice so what we need to do is move one this way and this one this way that's why it's not working but you still want to make sure they're roughly the same distance that looks good to me so now they'll move a bit quicker obviously they're not moving that quickly but say if we to, were to delete our friction because that's uh, making it grip to the surface a bit more we can uh, have a bit more of a free movement which is all good so we can put both of our winds into our torus so then we've got all of our uh, particle displaces here they're mainly used with particle world but you can use it for other things um, so there's our animating done you can always crank up this speed I think we do need to crank up our speed a bit more just go into our object tab and let's just put the wind speed to something like 10 see if that makes it just a little bit better yeah sped it up a little bit maybe put it to 20 and we can always add more speed into our motors motor sorry as well let's just change this I don't like how big you can see these motors I'm going to change that down to 15 just so they're a bit smaller they don't get in the way Yep, so that's all good. Let's just change our wind speed, uh, our motor speed, sorry, which would be the torque. You want your torque, so you can change it down to something like 10 if you wanted to, but that's when we start to see it just rolls onto the floor, which we don't want. And uh, so we're going to change that. I'm going to try 1,000. It's all up to your what you want for your final result. There we go, like that. Looks good. And for our motor, are these far enough apart? Because they could be, I could move each one in front of the wind. So let's just try moving our toruses. This is probably the wrong time to do that, but um, like I said, trial and error. So let's move that one roughly in front. Let's see what happens when we do this. Let's just get a better angle here. So you can see we've still got the same effect, but it's just not as good, I don't think. So they are rolling off, but our turbulence maybe just crank up our scale to like 600, 700. It'll just give it more of a wobble, maybe more of the strength as well, which will give it more of that wobbly effect. I'm not liking this one actually, so I'm going to undo Let's just do this until the start of the animation so we can see. Let's move our toruses just back in and just leave it like that. Because I think that's much better like that. Because they're still getting that wobble. Maybe a bit more on the turbulence, maybe 7 or something. And also in the turbulence you can add a fall off as well. 
So you could animate a turbulence, which means, um, say if you were to put a box, the turbulence is only going to affect anything within that box. So you can make it a bit bigger. So it's in this red box. Okay, so if I did this, it means it's going to affect everything within the box as soon as it gets out. It's not going to be affected. But I'm just going to leave it on infinite because it just makes our life a whole lot easier. Um, because we don't even see it when it goes off the screen anyway. So that's all good. Uh, our animation is now done and we can start lighting and texturing our objects. So yeah, uh, obviously I said like I've said like 15 million times you can always mess around with this. Um, don't be scared to and when we're done I'd love to see your results. They're probably going to be quite similar but you can always add different effects. You can add different sound effects to make it, I don't know, particle effects, dust, anything you like. But um, that's from Action Essentials. Sorry, the dust from Action Essentials Essential, where it burst out, etc. But yeah, I'll see you in the next tutorial, guys, and thank you very much for watching.